The Lord be with you. We have a busy day. We're going to do uh, our theme, our Upon This Rock theme is offering healing and care to all in need. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Our gospel text is the healing of the paralytic in uh, Mark chapter 2. We'll talk a little bit about that. We're receiving new members, and we'll do that right after the sermon. And we're also having a temple talk. Oh, and the blessing of the prayer shawls. And we'll do that during the children's sermon. I think that's about it. Let us um, sing our gathering hymn. If you remember, this is a hymn that the words were written by Mary Hansen, and she wrote this back when we first built our building. So, um, our gathering hymn, Upon This Rock. Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather to hear the Word of God, pray for healing of every kind, spiritual, physical, and emotional, and ask God's blessing for health and wholeness through Christ our Lord. This service is for healing of every kind, whether physical, spiritual, or emotional. As Christians, we believe God is the source of wholeness in our lives. Therefore, it is appropriate for us to conduct prayers for wholeness and healing. None of us is exempt from needing God's healing presence in our lives. Great God, our healer, by your power, the Lord Jesus healed and gave hope. 
as we gather in his name, look upon us with mercy and bless us with your healing spirit. Bring us comfort in the midst of pain, strength to transform our weakness, and light to illuminate our darkness. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken in our lives, in this nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You're now invited, brothers and sisters and brothers, I invite you to come and receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. You may be seated. While people come forward, you, we will sing Healer of Our Every Ill.
Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense and help you to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace with those around you.
from Genesis. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the second chapter. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat 
and went out before all of them so that they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come forward. Good morning. You all get a prayer shawl this morning. I'm going to get this one just to hold, to bless. Then you have to give them back. <laughs> I don't want you to, to think I'm an Indian giver. Oh, it, excuse me for, for saying that. I don't want you to think I gave you something and took it back. It's only there to, to hold. We're going to bless these. These go to people who are sick. Or sometimes, there are happy times for people who have had babies, but they're to tell people, <laughs> they're, they're to, to show people that we care about them and that God is present with them in their time of mis misfortune to bring them healing and hope. So, let us pray. Gracious God, we pray that you bless these prayer shawls. May those who receive these shawls feel the warmth that they bring and let them feel the breath, the warm breath of the Holy Spirit. May they feel comfort in knowing that someone prayed for them as they pieced it together. May they feel the power of our prayers. May they feel touched by your love, moved by your guidance, and held by your support. We ask that you, gracious God, bless these shawls and those who receive them. May they feel the love, comfort, and peace of your presence. And may it, your light shine on them and be a beacon of hope that is promised to all of us. Amen. All right, thank you. Well, thank you, Melody. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I see Tracy, when she put together the bulletin, she took the healing from Mark chapter 3 rather than Mark chapter 2, which shows you, I was looking at this week, that I think Mark, we, we, we say that Luke is the one who was the great physician that had stories about Jesus healing. Mark has healing all over the place in his gospel. Today our theme is offering healing and care. I'm going to begin by talking a little bit about uh, some comments the Reverend Dr. Rick Bar Barger made at the Synod Assembly this week. And we're going to begin with a By the way, the Reverend Dr. Rick Barger is the president of Trinity Lutheran Seminary in Ohio. Our first question, we're going to go through a litany, and he says he uses this litany with his youth group. Every time he would meet with his youth group, he would use this litany. So the first question he would ask, who are you? And the answer is, by the way, that's your part. Excellent. What are we here for? What is our message? What do we have to offer?
Very good. Let's look at each one of those for a second. Who are we? We are the church. Uh, we're working on our capital funds appeal to pay down the debt on this building. But we are not the building. When I talk to people out in the community and they say, oh, and they ask, well, what, what church do you pastor at? When I, they find out I'm a pastor and I go, Messiah Lutheran Church. And they go, oh, yeah, that's a nice church. And I say, yes, the people are wonderful because it's the people who are the church, not the building. You are the church. What, so why do we need a building? This is our, our base. We need, we need a center to work out of, to house our mission and ministry. We could uh, rent buildings around town, I suppose. But um, I had a, a wedding yesterday that was not here. I wish I was here. So what are we here for now to grow as disciples? This has come as a shock to you. This is something that uh, um, Dr. Barger said. The church does not exist to meet your needs. He says, in every new member class he has, he tells the people, the church is not here to meet your needs. And he says every single person he's said that to has not left. We are in a need-oriented society. Meet my needs. He says the church is not here to meet your needs. In fact, as I was thinking about this, I remembered something that was in the evangelical catechism. Remember the evangelical catechism that came out in uh, the 80s, big thick book, it said the church is God's mission in the world. We are God's mission. And what are we bringing? We're helping God send his love and his grace out into the world. We're his mission. Our message is that Christ is risen. Christ is risen. That means that the worst thing that can happen to you is not the last thing that happens to you. Because Christ is risen. We have hope that no matter how bad it gets for us, there is hope. I had a um, a funeral this week, Ed Wood. Ed believed he was going to live. I mean, he sat there and confidently said, I'm going to lick this. I'm going to get better. I know I'm going to get better. And uh, as I've said before, he was so convincing, he convinced me that he had longer to live than he did. Uh, little did I know that a few short days later he would die. But the good news there is the worst thing that could happen to Ed was not the last thing because Christ is risen. That's our message. Simple. And what do we have to offer? We offer wholeness and hope. Wholeness and hope. Dr. Barger talked about two messages that we have. We have the world's message and we have the message of the church, which is hope. The world's message is often one of decay, despair, But the church's message is hope. 
despite that decay and despair. In another congregation, I had a parishioner who, um, who was Irish. His name was Bill Brady. Bill drank too much and he smoked too much. And his wife, when, when he was diagnosed with a late stage of lung cancer and that he was dying and there was no hope, his wife would not tell him. And I said, no, no, you've got to tell him. And, and we argued back and forth, and finally she said, okay, you tell him. And I said, Bill, there's bad news. You're going to die from this lung cancer. His response was, damn cigarettes. And I said, Bill, that's exactly right. Those cigarettes got you. That was the world's story for Bill. But Bill, his family, all the kids came. They asked me to bring hymnals from church. And they spent days singing hymns to Bill. And Bill said, when I come, he says, I know they're my kids, but it sounds like angels. Bill had God's story. And our hope, the hope we share, is God's story. Mary Brower was... Um, a leader in the Reformed Church in America, and he died of colon cancer in 1993. At the time, he was the General Secretary of the Council of Churches, the National Council of Churches. And in his final months, he wrote this. These days I hold out very little hope for my cancer to be cured. The world story. I haven't given up, but the statistics steadily weigh in ever weigh in ever heavier against it. In spite of all that, I find my feelings of hope undiminished. God's story. How do I explain that even within the household of faith to say nothing of a skeptical world? How do I keep people from feeling as I speak of this or as they read this that I am clutching at a straw, that I am deceiving myself, using hope as a form of escapism from the harsh reality of the terminal illness and death? How do I communicate that in truth we do not sorrow as those who have no hope? Comes from 1 Thessalonians 4. I believe that death is not the end, not the last word. Having believed all this for many years, my feelings of hope are strong. I'm not filled with dismay or anger or bitterness. This is true in spite of the aching disappointment I feel related to the people I want to be with and to the things I would like to do in this life. This experience of hope, in spite of everything, is to me even more important than the experience of faith, in spite of everything. I am pro profoundly grateful for both. Ari Brower, he knew God's story. Faith and hope. We read that story from Mark chapter 2. You can imagine the astonishment of those four friends who brought their paralytic friend to Jesus. They were looking for a cure. Jesus offered forgiveness. You can imagine the shock on their faces when they lowered him down through the roof and Jesus said, he, he looked at them and saw their faith and said to the man, 
your sins are forgiven you. Jesus is offering God's story of forgiveness and hope. The religious authorities start debating and they say, how can this man forgive sins? And it's only because they said that, the text says, that Jesus said to show them he had the power to forgive sins. He said to the man, rise up and walk. Jesus was more interested in God's story than in what we want, a cure. Everybody remember Joni Erickson, figure from the 1970s, maybe even she started back in the 1960s. Joni was very athletic. In fact, they say the most athletic person in her class, and she had a diving accident, broke her neck, left her paralyzed, left her a quadriplegic, could not move her arms or legs. She became a great person of faith. If you remember, she made paintings by putting the paintbrush in her mouth and painted. Well, Joni Erickson was interviewed and they asked her about her condition and she said, great people, great prayer warriors come to me and they want to pray for me. But she says, I always know they want to pray for a cure. They want me to stop being a quadriplegic. And she said, instead, I say, could you make your prayer be one that asks God to help me when I cherish inflated ideas of my own importance. Please give me the power. Ask God so I don't do that. Can you please pray at those times when I fudge the truth? I don't know why she couldn't say would I lie, but fudge the truth. Pray for those times, please when I manipulate my husband to, to get things my own way. Sin. If you want to pray for me, pray for sin. Pray that I can receive the power of the resurrection to put to death the things in my life that displease God. Joni Erickson knows our message of wholeness and hope, which heals us. Amen.
I'm going to invite you to be seated for one moment, and I'm going to invite all those people becoming members to join, to come forward. And we have some new old members. Probably the newest old member is John Verhusen. John was part of this congregation as a youth, and now he's back and uh, going to uh, join us again. We know Danny and Dawn, Judy To, Ta Judy Tao. Um, well, I guess we can say is Carl's fiance. And of course, Margaret and Jeremy with Genevieve and Melody. Welcome. Welcome again. I want you to know we love you. We care about you. Here's what you're going to do with us. We welcome you as members of Messiah Lutheran Church to join with us in worshiping God, hearing his word, and sharing his supper proclaiming the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, serving all people, and striving for justice and peace in all the earth. Are you willing to do that, to strive to do that? If so, answer by saying, I will, with it, by the help of God. Now I have you turn around and face the congregation because the congregation is promising now to join with you in our mission to bring, to be God's mission in the world, to bring his love and mercy, wholeness and hope to the world. And if you're willing to do that, say, yes, by the help of God. Yes. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for these new members of Messiah Lutheran Church. By your life-giving power, bind us to each other in you. Strengthen us for service, support us all our days, and bring us at length to that day when all your children will be one, and you will be all in all. Amen. Welcome. You may be seated. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe Trusting the Spirit's power. O oh God, we pray for the church. Help us to grow in discipleship. Help us to proclaim your resurrection message. And help us to offer your hope, healing, and care. As we offer your holiness and hope, we pray that you bless our Upon This Rock Celebrate Mission appeal. Lord, in your mercy. 
You are the author of life, O oh God. We thank you for the creation, for soil and water, and for all animals. May there be an end to division among those who care for the earth. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for a troubled world that needs to hear our message of hope. We pray for those who have suffered because of the injustices and corruption of those in power. Send your peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, we pray for those who cry out to you. We pray for the ill, especially John Burke, Mary Lou Cordero, Cliff Dykeman, Pat English, Jackson Gilbert, Karen Gallet, Dustin Jones, Frank Kimsey, Jim Lampy, Scotty Immon, Ellen Lassant, Alan Malcolm, Verdeen Miller, Darren Murphy, Cherry Palermo, Ruth Pipcorn, John Reynolds, Jan Snath, Harriet Smith, Wayne Sproul, and Ann Wilbur. Are there any others? We thank you, O oh Lord, for all your many gifts. We thank you for the gift of family and the gift of love. Bless Sarah and Alec in their marriage and new life together. We remember in thanksgiving the saints who have died in Christ. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Ed Wood and of Jamie Nelson. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, gracious God, and those prayers known only to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We now have a temple talk. Good morning. I get to talk to you this morning about the sixth of our mission statement, and that's offer healing and care to all in need. And I wanted to start by telling you a story. This isn't what I planned to talk about when I walked in here this morning. But um, after hearing pastor's text and message, I wanted to tell you a story. Many of you know that I was a nursing instructor for many years and took students into a variety of healthcare settings for clinical experiences. And one time, a student nurse, a senior student, was in a long-term care facility, and she had been assigned to care for a gentleman who had had a massive stroke. And this man was confined to bed. He had lost all mobility except he could move one finger. And she walked and she said, See, there's a Bible there next to your bed. Would you like for me to read to you? He raised his finger and she said, okay, you're going to need to help me to know what to read to you. New Testament. And she said, oh, do, and he raised his finger. Matthew, Mark, the finger went up. Okay, chapter one, chapter two, the finger went up. And the story he wanted to hear was pastor's text this morning about the... coming and go. Okay, he did have the potential for spiritual healing and wholeness. How, how does that relate to our Upon This Rock campaign? Well, I believe that all healing and wholeness begins here in a caring, worshiping community. And we have been blessed with a facility that is very conducive to that work. But all you have to do is look in your bulletin at the schedule of events that happened throughout our facility in the course of a week. This month, we have had two weddings. We've had two funerals. Uh, we have had associated with those 
receptions uh, in our fellowship hall as expressions of care for families at times of transition. In the course of a week, the health ministry team met on Monday night. On Tuesday and Saturday nights, we open our doors to Narcotics Anonymous for people who are not members of our congregation, but who are dealing with other issues that require healing. We open our doors on Wednesday to the TOPS Weight Loss Group. Again, a different kind of healing. On Wednesdays, we have a faithful group who come and pray as part of our prayer support ministry. Um, on Tuesday night last week, there was a family education program for families who are enrolled in our Lighthouse Child and Family Development Center. And monthly they meet for programming that helps to strengthen those families and help them to know God's love and care for them. All of these things go on because of the facilities that we have. The Upon This Rock appeal has a goal of about $600,000 for this over this next three year period of time. And that will help to service the mortgage on this facility. We would like to be able to continue to, to make those payments of $10,500 a month, something like that, that we have been making recently. And my prayer is that I will see the day when we have this building paid off and we can put that money into other ministries and outreach and care into our world. I would like to invite you to look at the tables that we have out in Mission Hall that provide more information about our healing and care ministries. We welcome you to join us in that work. We have a core group that has been working to carry on the work that Marcy started prior to her retirement as parish nurse. Some of those activities require an ongoing commitment. Others are episodic, and some of them wouldn't require you even to leave home. You know, anyone can address cards or notes to the homebound. Um, not everyone can knit or crochet, but that was another group that, that meets weekly here in our facility and also carries on that work at home and other places. I, I've seen knitters carrying their, their bags everywhere. Um, but we would like to invite you, through your gifts, to help to continue to provide this wonderful facility we have and also through your talents to help in expressing our healing and care that comes from our foundation in God. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. I don't know if Nancy mentioned uh, that we do have safe haven over in one of our homes, and they provide uh, visitation for parents that's supervised, which is Interestingly enough, our finance team considers that a ministry. They, they so much so that they uh, lowered their rent. Um, so, and, and it is a very good ministry. The last two Saturday nights, they didn't come last night, but uh, two Saturday nights prior, we had a um, family that comes to Saturday night worship from that, that group. Please rise.
<clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, our call of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. and generous God. We thank, thank you that at this holy, holy table you have fed us this is, I know this has been a long service but I'm going to invite you to sit down for a couple of announcements. Rose, yes. And Lisa, you might as well come up too. I'll take a walk on the wild side here with the microphone. I'm here to invite you all personally a week from today to come to the, com the Commitment Sunday picnic. It will be immediately following the 11 o'clock service. And we would like all of you to come and join us for some good food and some good fellowship. There's nothing for you to bring or to prepare in advance. All that we ask of you is that you would please sign the um, the roster that is in the back of the mission hall at the welcome desk. That will help us know how much food to prepare. And we look forward to having you come with us and celebrate missions as we wrap up the Capital Fund campaign. So I'm here to remind you to tie a string around your finger and don't forget, sign up and join us next Sunday at noon. Thank you. I'm going to make just a short announcement. Um, you heard the number that Nancy gave that our goal is for this drive is $600,000. I feel compelled to tell you that as of now in our capital campaign, we have just over 40 pledges and it is just sitting at $200,000. That's not even enough to make our minimum payment for three years, as I figured it in my head. That's why I was distracted with the prayer. Um, I just think, you know, we've had a 24-hour prayer vigil going on here at the church, and we had some very faithful prayers that came in and prayed for our mission and prayed for generosity. Those of you get that get the Lutheran, and I know, I believe Nancy had it in her hand, and then she changed her topic. But I would just encourage all of you that get the Lutheran to open it um, and to read the very first story that is labeled generosity. And I think that I would just challenge all of you to pray uh, for generosity in that, you know, we have a larger deed to provide healing and wholeness, but we also have that ministry about us that it is to pray for generosity and maybe reach a little deeper than we have before in the past. Um, so I would just encourage you that. There is um, pledge cards out at the table. If you need a pledge card to take with you this week, I encourage you to do that. If you want to fill one out while you're here today, you can just place it in the wooden box. Next Sunday is Commitment Sunday, and we hope to really have something to celebrate at our picnic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vicki. One last announcement. Chris, why don't you come forward? It is with regret that I say, I inform you, that 
Chris is moving. You want to say anything more about that, Chris? Uh, well, I first want to say um, that I love Messiah. Messiah has been my home for two and a half years, and uh, and it is with regret um, and with a bittersweet heart that uh, that we are moving back to St. Louis. We just found out we're having our fifth child, um, and uh, that does have a, a deal to do with it as well. Um, but I love Messiah. Messiah is my home, um, and uh, we will miss you all very much. Thank you, Chris. I was hoping to have the name of the person we've been talking with to replace Chris uh, as an interim, but she might be moving too. <laughs> so we'll wait and see what God has in mind. Uh, please rise and receive the benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. For those of you that thought the music didn't match the words, it So, go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia.